Welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger, and it's wonderful to be here with you today because a little bit later on, we're going to be speaking with Amy Robeson, and we're going to be talking about the secrets of the Akashic Records. I know you've heard about them. Maybe you've practiced them or had someone facilitate a session or maybe none of the above, and your curiosity will be sated today. Dare to Dream podcast has been nominated for Two People's Choice Podcast Awards for a Webby Award. We recently won the Coalition of Visionary Resources for Best Radio Show and Podcast. And the show is listed in Welp Magazine as one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year. Thanks for putting us there. I appreciate that. The show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out in the world, so you can become a facilitator or take a course anywhere. Go to Dr. Dane here, H E E R.com, or accessconsciousness.com. I am Debbie Dashinger, and what I do out in the world is media visibility, specifically around books and podcast interviews. The first leg of my media visibility hub is as a book writing coach and I show you how to write a highly engaging book. The second leg is my company, fully done for the author, takes the author's book to a guaranteed international best-selling status. And the third leg is the ultimate visibility formula, how you can get booked on radio and podcast shows and get massive results. I've got some free gifts for you and you can learn all about your own visibility and how you can exponentialize that right now and bring your message and your being out into the world. Go to debbie-dashinger.com slash gift. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com slash gift and learn more about how you can become visible. Great skill to have. So yes, today I am interviewing and speaking with a very talented healer and spiritual mentor. Her name is Amy Robinson, and she's a skilled teacher with a rare ability to clearly communicate high spiritual concepts so her students become powerful healers in their own right. Amy has been gifted with the ability to tap into the depths of one's soul's desires, to discover the inner dialogue that's preventing them from being in alignment with their true self. Amy is devoted to reconnecting people to their innate divine nature so they can experience more joy, abundance, and love in their lives. She channels divine messages, and we'll be getting one in our show today, so you want to stay tuned. And she channels divine messages from the Akashic Records and loves teaching her clients how to access them as well. We're going to be giving you a long link. It's also going to be in the show notes to contact Amy and to find out about her new Akashic Record course rolling out. Please go to the Amy Robeson, R-O-B-E-S-O-N dot com slash sacred dash awakening slash R-E-F slash 147. Again, that will be in the show notes. And with that, I welcome the amazing Amy to Dare to Dream. Great to have you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah. <clears throat> We've known each other for so many years. It feels like these these times together, yeah, it's like a full circle, you know, to get to hang out like this. It and is. I always love seeing you and chatting with you. Thank you, love, so much. You know, I mentioned if, your new course, but this is not a new course you're no. offering. <laughs> So why don't you just clear that up? Because what I meant is it's being renewed, reoffered, but but clear that yeah, up. We, that. we offer it twice a year. Um, I've been playing in the records for a decade now. I can't believe that. I've been playing in the records. And for anybody that doesn't know what the Akashic Records is, yes. it's a field of infinite possibilities. And we all have an Akashic record from the moment your soul is accepted, every word, deed, thought is recorded in the Akash. And I like to refer to the Akash as like an energetic database, a Google search engine, where we can go and ask questions about any area of our life, past, present, and future. 
and receive love and guidance and support from the guardians of the records. And they support us in all areas of our life so that we can have a self-discovery, that we can live heaven on earth in this lifetime, in this moment, and not have to bring our old baggage with us along the way, which is really, really important. Now, as far as like sacred awakening, I've been teaching the program for quite some time. And it's a really fun program where we, you get to learn how to open the records for yourself and for other people. And we use a crystalline energy. It's very different from other Akashic record courses out there. I have to say, you, I looked at your course, your price point is wonderful. I can't yeah. imagine people not joining. Yeah, I want it, I want it to be a, a course that allows people at different budgets at different price points that want to join the course so that they can have a life tool because the Akashic Records is really a life tool and some people think it's only used for past lives and it's really not we can use it for if you're having a hard time communicating with someone like how can I communicate differently or offer me a different perspective around this situation? Because anything in life comes down to the perspective we have, the questions that we are asking and how we can shift into compassion as well. Hmm. And do you yourself, I mean, you know, you're pretty high level in all this. You've been doing this coaching, teaching, uh, magnificence, and, and there's many other things you offer. Do you still do readings? individual readings for people? I do not. I just don't have the space or time. So for us, I have a lot of students that take the course. So my students as a part of the course, they get certified. So they offer a ton of free readings in our free Facebook group. And then we also, I refer a lot of people to our students or to friends that I have that do the Akashic records. Cause I just don't have the, the space or energy cause I'm teaching, like I'm teaching a lot and I have clients and things like that. Um, I wish I could do readings all the time, but we do them more in, in a, cl in class where I channel messages for students in class. I have to say that I, I had a woman on my show and she's a galactic historian. She's like, it's unreal. She's like a Wikipedia of all things galactic. I and love I, it. Yeah. She does Akashic galactic readings. Yes. And I was, you know, this, so I, I had a reading with her the other day. It is the best thing I've ever done ever to find out the inception of my soul. And, you know, I get bored with earth. So when we're going <laughs> out there and I'm being told literally the planets, the, the species I've been, uh, the skills that I have, it made so much sense. This person doesn't know me. And when she's talking about all the lifetimes as a communicator and a writer and sound frequency, you know, I do music today and I sing. Hey. I mean, there was just so many pieces plus you know, things about my soul. It just made sense. So this stuff is for real. How did really you, is. yeah, it was very cool. How did you, Amy, find the Akash? How did that come in your life? So for me, I just started following the energy that felt good to me, like, cause I was in a very depressive state way back when and I just got getting like intuitive guidance I need to do yoga I need to do hot yoga and then that led me to needing to meditate and then that led me to needing to be hands-on healer and the more that I dug in and just followed what was being presented to me and trusting my gut I'm like yes I don't know what that is but yes I need to do that I just would follow the energy and I found my way to the Akashic records with my first teacher. Um, and she wasn't even teaching the Akashic records. Like I just started accessing them. And when I started accessing them, I was like, Ooh, these feel familiar. This is something I need to explore more. And that's when I really started going deeper into it as well. So the records just found me. And a lot of times the records find a lot of people or they just start hearing about it. And anytime, if you're getting the call to explore the records, you're ready to explore them. If they're presenting themselves to you, you're ready to explore them. And there's many ways and many methods of accessing the records. And there's many 
thoughts and perceptions on how the records can be used. And so if you're being guided, make sure you do your research and make sure you're in alignment with that teaching because there's so many different ways to do it. And you just want to make sure that it follows what you're wanting to do. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I know that there are, I've read Akashic record prayers mm -hmm. and I know there's usually a prayer to open the wind, um, open the records, the records and close the records. So what does, what does the records do for us? Talk about like specifics, why people would do it besides the innate calling, but what can they get out of it? That's very yeah. concrete result wise. So for me, I believe it's a life tool. And so you can use it in any and all areas of your life. So if you're having money issues, you can go in and ask questions about money. You can discover patterns around money. I know for me, like when I started my business, I started noticing my savings account kept going down, down, down. And I'm like, what is happening? Like, why is this happening? So I go in the records and the records are like, you have a pattern of letting go of all of your money with big transition. Here's where it stemmed from. And the cool part is we have patterns and we have things that hold us back from manifesting our heart's desires. And so for me, the Kashuk Records is a manifestation tool. It's a self-discovery tool. It's a character building tool. It's your best friends on speed dial to receive support because you can't call your friend in the middle of the night if you're up late thinking about something that you don't know how to work through or maybe you can't talk to your counselor right away because you need to work through something you can just open your records and ask questions and for me what I have found is if I'm in a state of melancholy or sadness I want to know why I am because sometimes we can feel a certain way and not know where that's coming from. Mm. And so we can lean in and use it as a mental health tool as well. So it, when I say any and all areas, literally any and all areas of your life, you can use it for. Can you describe, because that's fascinating to me. So you have had this pattern with money and you were saying, I don't know what's going on. My business is going here. My money's going there. When you say I opened it up and it revealed this information that I have this pattern and this is what it stemmed from, do you mean visually? Do you mean auditory? How do you receive that information? So everyone receives information differently. So we have our clairs and our clairs are how we receive spiritual information. Mm -hmm. So for me, my strongest clair is clair cognizant. So it's a clear knowing. I'm not gonna see something I might hear something, I might feel something because those clairs are strong for me too, but I'm not going to, I didn't see this message. I knew this message and, or I might've heard one piece and then another piece came in and then it all comes together. And then I do get visuals as well, but everyone's clairs are available to them. We just have to strengthen them like lifting weights. We have to strengthen that muscle and you might receive it through knowing, you might receive it through hearing, you might receive a visual, you might have a feeling, you might even smell or taste something that brings forward a memory or a thought that answers the question. I also have a specific method that I teach my students on how to receive the, the answers and we use our players with that as well. Okay. And what about couple Akashic records? Is there such a thing? You can use the Akashic records as a couple as well. I've actually had student like students that were couples that have taken the course together. And I think that that's really cool. Um, the thing about that is sometimes couples have a hard time separating their energy from one another. And so it might be a little more challenging for someone to give their spouse uh, Akashic record reading and their spouse give them an Akashic reading because the information can feel like it's theirs or not theirs. So it just, it's, it's hard to separate sometimes. So I always recommend people just wait and get practice under them before they start doing their significant other, but everything has a record. And so a couple can have an Akashic record. And so we can open up the couple's Akashic record and do a reading for the couples. That's more of an advanced technique than a beginner's technique. 
And then if somebody wants to come for a reading, it should be an individual or a couple can get a together. A yeah, so it just depends on the intention of what the session is all about. So if a couple wants to come in, they can do that. You open up the Akashic records for the couple. So everything has an Akashic record. Antiques have an Akashic record. So we can open up the Akashic records of an antique and a, a book. Uh, you can open up the Akashic records of your business. You can open up Akashic records of crystals, of the house, of the land. Wow. Like you can open, everything has the records. But we have to practice spiritual law. We have to have ownership or permission. And that's really important. Like you can't just go, I can't be like, Hey, I saw this property I want to buy and I don't own it, but I'm going to open up the records and start digging around in there. That's not acceptable. That'd be breaking spiritual laws. Also, I can't just go and open up my significant other's Akashic records without his permission either, because we want to make sure that we're practicing spiritual laws because there is a ripple effect when we do something that we're not supposed to be doing. And so we want to be practicing spiritual laws, the do's and don'ts of playing in the records. Okay. And this would be a beautiful time if you would be willing to do some kind of channeling or Akashic record reading. Would that resonate with you? Yeah. So do you have a topic do you want me to do something for you, Debbie? Or would you like me to do something general? Or do you want me to do both? Both. <laughs> both sounds great. I want people to really have an experience of this. So yeah, that would be beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So let's do you first, because that's what I'm getting um, from like receiving guidance to do. And then I opened up this session because we talked about doing doing some of this channeling. So I already opened up the records beforehand and I have permission to connect with you to share, share a message. And then also because this is a, a podcast, if anything that I'm sharing with Debbie resonates with you, that message is also for you. And that's the cool thing when you do group stuff is things will just ripple out and whatever resonates, great, keep it. Whatever doesn't resonate, leave it behind. And then we'll do something for the collective as well. So is there a specific topic question that you want to ask? Wow. Um, yes, I, I would like to explore money with you. Is, sure. And um, does it have to be a very specific question about money or how does that work? I think that the the more specific you get with the question is great. Also, I'm being mindful that we're on a podcast. So <laughs> uh, if you have a specific question, just so we're not having it general, you'll get more out of the answer for that. Sure. So I, I'm in a time of tremendous transition right now and change. And and um, yeah, I my capacity is not that huge, but my... Uh, requirement for mo more money, additional money, sustainable money is big. And so uh, I'm not sure how to bridge that right now, but money could be in, in the milieu of all the change going on. It actually could be a very lovely anchor. So what would be a way for me to significantly not only just increase my money flow, and it doesn't have to be effort, by the way, I'm good without effort, <clears throat> and also keep it sustainable that this is ongoing and even better. Yeah. So what they're saying is to focus on what you know. It's not time to reinvent the wheel. It's not time to go out and start creating new things. You have a core set of offerings that you are really good at. And for any of you guys that are listening, Debbie is an amazing book coach. I'm coached with her before, like that is your lane. And if that's, they're wanting you to focus on that. And then also um, reevaluate what those offerings look like. So not reinventing the wheel and offering new things, but looking at and restructuring and repurposing and reimagining some of your offers, because it will allow you to set your coaching business up slightly differently than you are right now, which then will allow you to feel comfortable with 
having a different um, investment point into working with you as well. The other thing that they're wanting you to focus on too is not to worry about where or whom is going to show up um, and how you're going to go about doing this. Because once you kind of reimagine everything, you're going to get insights on who's a perfect fit for you. And you'll also energetically be calling them in. And then I will also give you, um, when we hop off the call, I'm going to give you like a personal practice to do that's just personal for you um, for calling in your dream clients that are meant to be working with your reimagined package. Do you have questions about that? Beautiful. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's interesting because I'm actually, my brain is around some of that right now. Oh, good. Uh, I have a new offering around international bestsellers that is a different price point. And, um, and I offer anthology books also for coaches who have themes and want to, you know, offer something to their clients and say, come aboard and Debbie's going to produce the entire anthology. All you do is write a, a chapter. And so I want to also, you know, put that out. Um, so I don't, I'm not thinking of a question a right now. You need a space. Like what I'm getting for you is you need a creative space that makes you feel safe. Mm. Like super, super safe. And you'll know what that space is the moment you see it and the moment you arrive. Um, put your fillers out to a few different people that you're looking for new spaces to be in. And um, you'll find it through a friend is what I'm getting. You'll find it through a friend. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. That resonates. I mean, it will happen easily, Debbie. Like, but you have to, there's a thing, you have to let go of the outcome of it and just kind of be it, like, there's this surrender energy that's to occur. Like, don't try to fix anything or do anything. It's just like, I'm going to find this space. I'm putting it out to the universe and it's going to land in my lap. Thank you. Yes. Ta-da. Thank you. That's gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. And um, I appreciate that. And what I'm very interested to see how you're going to channel or... Yeah. So what I'm getting, because I was sitting with this earlier, like what's the collective message that the master's teachers and loved ones, and they just gave me a topic. So the topic is self-love and self-care. So this is what they're saying. It's time for you to put your own priorities, your own needs above the rest. And so this is, just so we're clear, this is for the entire audience. audience. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's time to put your needs above the rest. And what they mean by the rest is let go of societal noise, let go of the to-do list, self-care is absolutely necessary in terms of taking care of yourself on a mental, emotional, and spiritual level. And upgraded self-care practices are not necessary. They are a requirement right now. And what they mean by requirement is what, what, what has worked in the past is in the past, and it's time to reevaluate what your soul requires in order to feel good. And feeling good is a necessary part of being human. And it is your birthright to feel good. They're also saying that if you're not sure about how to take care of yourself, sit down and start researching and evaluating self-care practices that are common self-care practices. And they're not talking about bubble baths. Self-care practices can be setting boundaries, can be taking care of your physical body. So exercise, eating right, um, regimens to take care of your skin or um, your muscles, your health. 
also ex self-care practices in terms of the way you're talking to yourself. So mantras or um, love notes, like I see people like leaving little love notes on their mirror, but they're saying that there's not a one size fits all. And it's important to take time and look at things that work for other people and be inspired, not compare, be inspired. And so you can take the little things that, ooh, that person's doing this over here. I'm going to do that. I think I can walk for five minutes a day. Oh, I think I can do a water challenge. I think that I can write down my feelings for five minutes each day. I can do a gratitude practice each time I eat. And these practices will start to build. And as they build, your mindset will shift. And they're saying that love, self-care practices will lead to a different level of love and appreciation for yourself. And love and appreciation for yourself is necessary right now because there's a lot of static in the collective conscious. And with that static also comes a lot of resistance and a lot of fog. And so if you've been feeling a little foggy, a little tired, a little overwhelmed, depressed, sad, this is all that static in the collective. And so the more that you lean into these self-care practices, into these self-love practices, the more you're going to recognize this is my aligned path. This is my light. Everything else that's going around me is just noise. And I don't have to take part in it. And I don't have to be a part of it. I don't have to participate in it in any way, shape, or form. And what they're saying is take the time out now to reevaluate. and see if there's anything else. Do you have questions, Debbie? Lauren? No, that's really powerful. Um, and I'm thinking you kind of are the queen of self-care. And I know it, it wasn't something that came right away, but something you've developed. What do you do, Amy, for self-care? What, what so kind of I think self-care for me has is change changes per chapter I'm in and in, in the year or chapter I'm in in that in that point and period of my life. And so right now I have a toddler. She's almost two. I my spiritual practices look very different than before I had a child. So my self-care practices involve chanting in the car on the way to drop her off at school. It involves taking some sort of walk. And I recently had a health scare where I can't go outside right now. And so my walk involves walking back and forth in my living room because I know I need to move my body, but I can't take the heat right now physically. And so that's what I'm doing. Um, drinking water. Second I get up, I get her ready. I go and I drink my soul water. So it's like a salt mixture that you put in your water to remineralize because we're not a lot of us are mineral deficient and so self-care for me is also making sure I'm taking my vitamins and minerals and feeling really good about that um I have skin regimens I have spiritual like I have all sorts of different things that I do um but they're always constantly changing based on what my needs are at that moment in time and what my schedule looks like. And also I leave room for flexibility in terms of things don't go the way as planned for the day. And so I'll change it based on what's happening. And like I messed up my schedule today. And so guess what? I could rearrange a bunch of stuff and I got to do some stuff earlier. Now do some stuff later and it's perfect. Beautiful. I know you also have a very unique relationship with crystals yeah Can you talk about that what is that like for you and i feel like you know what i want to say what is that dialogue you have with them so i love crystals i grew up with crystals sacred awakening my kashuk record program we open the records with crystalline energy um i love the crystals and crystals are like little light beings that are here to support us and they all have special gifts that they can support us with and for example like amethyst can act as a psychic vacuum and clear out 
debris and junk in your energy field. It also can connect you with spirit, but not all amethysts are the same. And so one amethyst might be a really grounding, protecting stone, even though it's a higher vibrational stone in terms of the element it's made of. But the other one can be the one that you use to connect with spirit, the one that you use to con connect with getting messages. You can also have um, fluorite. Fluorite could be something that allows you to be very grounded and make quick decisions. It can also be a stone that helps restructure and repair your DNA. It can also be a stone that helps you focus. So every single type of crystal has its own little job. And the more I believe that we work with the crystalline energy, the more that we come out of the 3D realm and into higher levels of consciousness. Hmm. Powerful. Um, so do, do you use them every day? Do you bring them into your life or is it when necessary? I have crystals throughout my entire house. <laughs> crystals are a part of my dialogue. Um, am I, they're more of, um, so like if I'm meditating, I'll hold a crystal. I might sleep with a crystal. I have crystals that are anchored in certain places in my house to support me in things. I have crystal grids that are set up with different intentions. And so I, if I'm not physically picking up a crystal, they're, the crystals are working in some way, shape, or form based on the job that we've talked about or I've assigned them. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And I know that you, um, it was really interesting looking at your website because I didn't know this about you, but I do now that you're into light language. So yeah. I'm just going to say as an aside, the first time I heard light language, I was like, <laughs> it was like someone was speaking gibberish and being insane. I, and I look, I, I come from an acting background. I was a professional actress and there were times when a, a director would take a script away from you and say, just speak gibberish, but get your intention out there. And we would talk to the other actor and do, yeah, it's hilarious. And I was watching this the first time I'm in a sacred circle going, and I'm not, still not sure. I mean, now today my judgment is gone. Yeah, so right. for me, I always set context, especially if I'm doing something new for, with someone, because I heard light language the first time and I'm like, are you talking to someone else? Like, are you speaking in a foreign language? Like, what are you doing? Like, what's going on? It's a light language is weird. It is so weird. And uh, for the listeners, like light language is a cosmic, language of the soul. And so with light language, you are speaking directly higher self to higher self. And when I started being guided to speak it, I, I, I refused to, like, I told my guides, I'm like, I'm not like, I don't feel comfortable doing this. <laughs> like people are going to judge me. People are going to think I'm weird. And they like, I just, I had to work through it because I kept getting guidance after guidance after guidance that I had to do it. And it's crazy because I speak light language in my activations and healings and the courses I teach and the three things I offer. And the cool thing about light language, it can activate you hearing someone else's light language activates your light language as well. Hmm. So it's really cool because like a lot of my students that are in other courses than our light language course they, they'll be like my light like my light I just started speaking light language I like it was so strange or like I'm starting to feel like I want to speak light language but I'm nervous about it and I just like it's so neat to witness and it's also really fun and really weird. Like it is so weird. And, and it does sound like gibberish, but everybody, it just depends on the person. Like it depends on how, what their light language sounds like, because some people it's very tones, like a lot of tones that can sound primal. Um, some people, it can sound like a foreign language. I know like for me, when I first started speaking it, it sounded like a blend of like 
Japanese and something else. I don't even know what it like. And then my light language has changed because as a, the more I use it, the more that things integrate. And I just had a like a backlog of tons of light language that wanted to come through. So it would come through really, really fast. And also light language is speaking in tongue. Like it is similar to speaking in tongue. I personally call it light language because I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. And so it's similar to that. And it's just, there's no human words sometimes that can encapsulate and describe what wants to come through because every every sound, every movement, and every uh, symbol holds paragraphs of information. And we just don't have the human language to describe what wants to come through, but your higher self knows what it is. And do you feel it when it comes through you? Do you actually have an understanding of what's taking place? I have it, the essence, because remember, not everything, we don't have human language for it, but I'll have the essence and the, the meaning of what the essence of what they're trying to say and what's wanting to come through. Well, it's it's, it's like, so weird that we, like, it really it is. is. I know. <laughs> I know I'm actually going into a workshop situation in a couple of weeks and they do this there and it's going to happen several times and they're going to gather at least five people who have completely different forms of light language to be in a circle. I love it. And you know, so it's good for me because it took all this discomfort out and just to sit with and you know, whatever I can receive, I receive. Um, that's so cool. I love that you're doing it because you're going to like your experience with light language by the time you're done with that is going to be totally different. Yeah, because three years ago, the first time I heard it, I thought they're nuts. What are these like, really? <clears throat> and uh, it was very uncomfortable. I just wanted to leave the next year. Look, you know how much we all grow when we're spiritual, like this enormous growth period for me. And then I went back and, you know, a, a different experience of that with many people. And then I was just receiving whatever I can receive. And this year will be, of course, even deeper. So yeah, just just notice, notice your, your higher self. Like for me, like my students have told me, like, it's like my higher self like comes in and it just like wakes them up. Cause sometimes they're going to like a deep trance or they go into avoidance mode during activations or healings because we're afraid to do the next thing. And so what light language does is it kind of like zaps. It sends like a zap of energy to the higher self and to you on a conscious level, like, Hey, pay attention. Like this is what's coming through. And then also you might receive downloads through dreams or thoughts or experiences later on. If nothing happens during that moment in time, pay attention to what's happening the days after, just after the workshop and your dreams, because things are constantly coming at us and we don't have to have this big experience in that moment because it's not meant to happen in that moment every time. Okay, that's amazing advice. I love that. And I like that, you know, like everything, it doesn't necessarily happen in that moment, you know, and don't leave before the miracle occurs. Yeah. It can be when you release and let go in your dreams. It can be in many forms, you know, shifts and so forth. So yeah, I will really go in with that very open attitude. I like that. You I'm said something about earlier that I'm curious about. And you said, you mentioned about tapping into the depths of somebody's soul desires and that there's this inner dialogue that's discovered uh, that can prevent the person from alignment with their true self. I would really love out of curiosity if you have some examples of this. So and sometimes what times the pre prevention, the misalignment, but then what can happen after you or your students or whatever work with somebody, what else is possible or what have you seen? Yeah, because sometimes we are on this path and we have this path that we want to do. Let's say you want to be a doctor. Let's just say that. Like, I want to be a doctor. This is what I want to be. And you're doing it. You're on your way there. Or And then you're not happy or there's something else that's coming forward for you, but you can't figure it out. Well, what we can do is we can look at the inner dialogue and what we might uncover is that's actually not what you really want to do. And you only did it because of X, Y, Z. 
And now if you actually let that thing go, this whole other world can open up to you. And a lot of times it can be career. It could be decisions that you're making with relationships or romance where there's this inner dialogue where there's this conflict of what's happening. And then when we look at the inner dialogue and we discover like, hey, I'm actually upset about something from childhood and this is causing conflict in my relationship, then we can change it and shift it and heal the inner child so that you can start having a different relationship with that person that you were having conflict with. And it's really neat to witness and personally on a personal level, like I love it because I get called out on my stuff and we all have stuff and it's just trauma responses that usually we have, or we have some sub, subconscious languaging happening within that's preventing us from getting what we want. I love that. And I agree a hundred percent. That's definitely been my life experience. So when you unearth this misalignment, oh, okay, it's actually has to do with something else here, but it's showing up through a trigger and manifesting in this current time and not benefiting anyone, creating a lot of misalignment. What are What is the process to heal that? I know you spoke about the inner child, but is there actually a process to heal the misalignment so there can, first of all, be presence currently yeah so sometimes it's just creating an experience for the person so for example i might take a client on a past life regression that we uncover all of this trauma that happened in a, a previous life and then we clear that trauma from the cells and then they don't have to take that baggage with them moving forward or we might work with the inner child, or we might have a dialogue with an ancestor that had a belief system that's carrying over into the client's life that doesn't align with their values and their path. And we just thank the ancestor, we clear it, and we get them in alignment with what they truly want. So the process is different and unique per situation and per individual, because there's no we're so multifaceted, like we're so unique and we can have many things that are bringing trauma to us that are influencing our behaviors, our thoughts and our relationships. So it's really neat to like, just cust we customize it is what we do. Yeah, because I you and I know this and it seems so apparent, but sometimes it's mystifying to me that if you have an issue in a relationship, you tell me, Amy, what are the odds it's going to show up in another relationship if you don't work it out in the one you're in? Oh, it's going to show up. Like it is going to show up again and again until you address it. And it's, we have different things that, it, it, let me give you this example. It's like, the, the good girl that always attracts the bad boys and they break her heart and break her heart and break her heart until she actually recognizes the pattern and her worth. She's going to continue to attract that type of man into her life. That also goes for even friendships. Mm. If you're a people pleaser and you have the tendency to give, 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 give and not get anything in return until you address that, you're going to continue to attract those types of people in your life. And how we address it is setting boundaries, taking a pause and stepping back and reevaluating like, hey, what's going on? Like, why am I behaving in this way? Why am I allowing this to happen? And where is this stemming from? I think that's a really valuable question. Like, where is this stemming from? Where, how, how did I get here? Like, how did I arrive here? And you might realize it's from childhood. Some people say, well, I didn't have a traumatic childhood. It, it doesn't have to be traumatic. And I'm putting that in quotations. You could have dropped your ice cream cone and you were upset because 
you didn't get to have an ice cream and everybody else got to have an ice cream. And now like you feel left out and that created a pattern of feeling like you have to be on the outside of everybody while everybody else is enjoying something. Mm. And it's, it's fascinating to see also like relationships. We, we can have a lot of things that happen to us. It's how we choose to respond to what happens to us. And so what, causes trauma to one person might not cause it to the next person. And so it's always giving yourself grace and compassion and looking at it through the lens of love and getting super, super curious so that you can have a self-discovery. And we're all here to have that. Yeah, because um, in this example you just provided, Amy, it, you know, if there, and this always happens in a relationship, whatever the nature is, when a, a serious situation occurs, there's two different responses. That's always where the tension and the further triggering is. And you mentioned, you know, that it's impossible to understand one another, completely different realities, completely different triggers. And so what would somebody do in that situation? You know, how can you show up for yourself as well as for somebody else with the hope to heal? So it just depends on the dynamic of the relationship. Sometimes we have to take a step back because everybody has their own way of responding to trauma. And like, I'll give you an example. Like my husband the other day started having a conversation with me and I was super triggered by it, like uber triggered by it. And so he walked away. Like he didn't even realize I was triggered by it. I took time to one, ask myself, why am I triggered? Well, I was upset by the way that he approached the situation. I felt that it required a certain amount of finesse <laughs> and a certain way of addressing it. And the time he addressed it was not appropriate. So it, it's taking a step back and reevaluating and then also asking like, why am I feeling the way that I am? And try not to place blame. This person did this, this person, it, it, not blame in the current situation is what I mean by that. So you might go like, why am I triggered? Well, sometimes I feel like people don't hear me. Okay, that might be the response that you have. And then you can say, is this person hearing me or am I reacting from a place of trauma? Because if you take the time to just ask yourself some questions, it will shift the way you show up in the conversation with the other person. And I think that sometimes people are too quick to respond and it is okay to pause. Mm -hmm. Like, it's okay to be like, you know what, let's take a pause because I want to like really absorb what you're saying. I really want to hear what you're saying. I can't do that right now. Or I appreciate what you're saying right this moment, but I need to take a step back and just think about what you just shared with me and then have time to respond. So I respond in a nice, kind way. And it's okay to, to take that step back. The other thing I think too, is if you're having a hard time communicating with someone, you can ask yourself, where have boundaries been broken? Where have you broke the boundaries? And where have has the other person broke the boundaries? Because sometimes it just has to do with boundaries. And when we break the boundaries, like when we don't hold boundaries and we break the boundaries and when the other person don't hold the boundaries and they break the boundaries, are you enabling each other? It just creates a tornado effect of just drama and trauma responses. And so to me, I would rather pause and ask myself questions. And I can take, like, it might even be like, just give me a second and let me breathe take a breath, notice if you're holding your breath, because <laughs> that's really important. And then just ask yourself some questions or take a step back, walk away, let the person know you're walking away and not just leave without talking about that you need to take a break. Because I think that's also important. So the other person understands what's happening for you. Yeah, because uh, 
time out is not just meant for children. <laughs> no, it's a really incredible tool when things get heated up to say, I need to take a pause, I need to step outside, I will can, I think it's important to let somebody know I will continue this with you, that you're not just abandoning them and mm -hmm. the conversation of walking out and leaving them, because that's devastating, but to be responsible enough to say to be continued just not in this moment. I need a breath. Yeah, especially if that person has abandonment issues. Definitely. Like deep abandonment issues, because that can be extremely triggering. Yes. But they just need to be reassured, just like you need to be reassured. A lot of times we're communicating inner child to inner child. And what's happening is our inner child is wounded. Mm -hmm. And the more that we recognize that person as an innocent child and that you're an innocent child as well, the easier it is for us to bring in compassion, grace, and love. Mm. I know that you're a huge manifester and you've got a really successful business. As long as I've known you success and more success. And, you know, I'm always fascinated to see how you're putting yourself out there and the really pro way that you operate. I really appreciate it. I think it's a great inspiring example. Can you give us some insights that you've learned along the way, maybe some things we haven't heard about or know out there <clears throat> about manifesting. Hmm, let me sit with this one for a yeah. second. I'm gonna talk about manifesting. And for me, manifesting, the foundation starts with self-care. And then it also is recognizing opportunity cost. Anytime you go against the thing that you want to do, so anytime you really want to say yes to something, but you say no, or anytime you say no to something and you really want to say yes, there's an opportunity cost in it. And opportunity costs are going to assist you or not assist you in manifesting your heart's desires. And so reevaluating your decisions and the ripple effect of the decisions that you're making throughout the day to see if they support that heart's desire or goes against the heart's desires, that's really important. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm working on my health okay. and I realize that my vitamin B is low. Well, anytime I say no to taking the vitamin B, I'm just causing more health issues and I'm not taking care of myself. Anytime I say yes to taking it, I'm saying yes to my health. Similar to if you're wanting to, let's say, start your business and you know the very first thing that you want to do for starting your business is to create a business plan. Every single time you make an excuse on why not to start that business plan or write a book, every time you make an excuse not to write a few chapters or a few sentences, you are saying no to that dream. And you're saying yes to whatever more you're going to continue to create in the reality that you're creating. So opportunity cost, I think, is really, really often overlooked as a part of the manifesting regiment tools, tricks. Wow. I've never heard that before. Did you, did you ever have an opportunity come to you where you wanted so much to say yes, but there was doubt or concern about how you were going to move forward? How did you manage it? Um, I, so when I started my coaching business, I also, I had a very lucrative career before I started my coaching business, but in that career, I also started teaching yoga because I knew that I needed some other income to supplement my coaching business as I was getting started. And so for me, I did it. And then I got guidance that it was time to let go of my coaching business or not my coaching business, my yoga, yoga business, <laughs> not my coaching business, my yoga business. And I needed to let go of my classes. Mm. And uh, like, I was really, really scared. And so I got guidance that it was time to do it. I found someone to replace all my, my classes. I then go and talk to this person I was renting my office from. 
And he was like, Amy, I have an amazing opportunity for you. Amazing. I, Cause I rented an office in a chiropractor's office and he was gonna change the whole chiropractor's office, bring in personal training. And I was gonna be their in-house yoga teacher for private lessons. Wow. Huge opportunity if you want some money. Yes. And so here's spirit dangling this carrot of like, are you serious about jumping fully into your coaching business? Mm. And I had to say no to that opportunity because I knew that if I didn't, I would be saying no to my coaching business. So by saying no to that opportunity, I was saying yes to my coaching business and letting go of my yoga income. I replaced it within 24 hours. Come again. <laughs> yes. Like literally like the universe was like, here you go. Here's your reward for trusting. Wow. Cause I ended up getting divine guidance on a different package to create. I put, I put the word out there and it like, it was insane. Like insane. I was like, thank you, God. I'm so grateful. Like, thank you. I knew I made the right decision. And it was just, and does things happen like that instantaneously? No, but I also worked on it for an entire year. Like I literally told myself this was the last year I was going to do it. I was letting it go. I was finding someone. I was like, it, cause it was getting out of hand. Like I was more distracted with that than my, my coaching business. And I wanted my coaching business to work. And so I had to look at what the ripple effect of my decisions were. And did you have a plan while you were extricating yourself from the yoga business? Did you already have a plan and an offering, you know, things that are, were in line so that they happened to land? Yeah. So I started looking at, like, I already started launching my first coaching program. Like I had one-on-one -on -one coaching business clients already. I launched my first group program. And then after that, I was like, okay, it's time to really get serious and only work in my coaching business and let go of the yoga altogether. Um, and so I started looking at what that offer could look like. How could I own that offer? Because on an energetic level, when it comes to offerings or comes to even like a raise, you have to energetically own that energy, that frequency to hold it in your energy field for you to feel worthy of it. And so for me, like I would trick myself into, and I say that loosely trick myself because it, it, sometimes it is like a little trickery to like make your, your inner gremlins own something like own your worth. And so I had to trick myself into, if I had it at this price point, what would that look like where I would feel really good making that offer and be an in integrity and like the coaching package I offer was beyond ridiculous. Like they got so many things in it. And I, I only sold it to three people. And then after that, I couldn't do the package. Like I had to take things away because it was just a ridiculous package. But I was able to meet, I made the income I needed. Like I really needed that income it, because like I said, my, my, my bank account was dwindling and I only had so much money left in savings. And I knew like, I knew it was all going to work out. It just, what did, what did I have to let go of? And who did I have to be willing to become in order to do that? Beautiful. That's yeah. thank you so much for providing new information. I really do appreciate that. And for your great example, I want to shift before we end back to sacred awakening to your program that people can register for, for the Akashic records. Just talk a little bit about what they can find there. Yeah. So sacred awakening is a 14 weeks uh, certification course. You do not have to get certified. If you don't want to, you're going to learn how to open the records for yourself, learn how to ask powerful questions. There's a lot of healings, a lot of activations in the course. You'll learn how to open the records for other people. We have a ton of bonuses. I talked to you about how to not take on other people's energy, how to clear your energy, how to ground, um, how to use your superpowers, which are your clairs, 
to access the information and the records. I send you a crystal kit. We have students all around the world. It's such a really fun, amazing course. I also talk to you about how to work with different aspects of yourself. And there's several things that make this course different and unique, and this is part of it. We are not just this human flesh body. We have a mental body, we have a spiritual body, we have an emotional body, we have an inner child, we have an ego. We have different aspects of ourselves that we can connect with and understand how they are influencing our behaviors and our decisions. And then we can talk to the masters, teachers, and loved ones, also known as the guardians of the records, on how to bring them into balance. So if you've ever had something that you're really excited about and then you sabotage yourself from doing it, it's chances are one or more of your bodies weren't on board with it for whatever reason. And so we can talk with them and then we can bring them into balance too. Um, I teach you how to open the records with the crystalline energy. You do not have to love crystals, but you might end up loving them by the end of the course. And I also send you crystals as well. Um, it's just a really neat, very neat course. And there's a bunch of other bonuses that I give that's not even listed. Like I'm a big believer in like when students have questions, I have answers. Like I'm going to support you throughout the course and throughout the program. And I want you to understand how to open the records for yourself. I also have like students that are beginners and I have students that have taken other Akashic record courses out there. Um, so no matter where you're at, the records will meet you where you're at. The course will meet you where you're at too. Beautiful. Yeah. And you know, there's an early bird price folks. So yeah. if you want to jump on this, it's only 1497, which for 14 weeks and to get that kind of a live connection and sounds like self-healing as well as the potential to, for a business or another piece of your business, or just to play around with your you know, family and friends, but very powerful tool. As you said in the beginning, you used it every time you hit an obstacle to say, what's going on with my money? What's going on with my relationship? What's going yeah. on with my bodies? Who's on board? I mean, I love that. Um, so yes, and also for folks, I wanna say, cause I was really impressed by this. Uh, Amy gives you many payment options. So a 14 yes. is not in the cards. She breaks it down, two payments, three payments, four payments, six months, a year. I mean, it's doable. So if this calls, like she said, opportunity, if you feel the opportunity, a knocking and you get a yes, don't do manifest. That's the bottom line. Go for your manifestation. Your opportunity is leading you to your next greatness. I'm going to give you the website. It is long. Bear with me. It's the Amy, R-O-B-E-S-O-N, theamyrobison.com slash sacred dash awakening slash REF slash 147. Or if you want, there's a, a bit.ly which ends with 3KV2WDQ. I know it's a lot. It's in the show notes. Just go there. Amy, we're here at the end. What do you next dare to dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I've talked to you about this. I am definitely writing a book. <laughs> and what I want to talk about is just how different aspects of ourselves influence us. Because I think that this is something that not a lot of people talk about. And we have to own all parts of our being in order to really understand the full picture of owning our worth and owning our wholeness. So that's what I really want to do. And I'll be doing it soon. <laughs> I'm so glad. I can't wait. I know that's going to be a smash hit too. I already know the way you write. I know the exquisite care you put into everything. So we'll be a very fortunate audience when that dream comes true. Thanks for coming on the show. It has truly been an honor and amazing. Thank you, Debbie. It was amazing. I'm so happy to be here. Thank yeah. you. So folks, again, if you would like to learn how to read the Akashic Records and work directly with Amy Robeson, go to theamyrobeson.com slash sacred dash awakening slash REF slash 147. And I end today's show with this quote from Tyler Perry. The key to life when things get tough is to just keep moving, just keep moving. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, the weekly Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger podcast. Leave a comment and share if you're listening 
on a podcast platform or radio, and you'd like to see what we look like, join us, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. I read all your comments. I am grateful for having you on this journey. Next week, I am featuring Jimmy Mack. He's a character. I can't wait to have him on here. He's a multi-talented healer. He heals body, mind, spirit, people, places, pets, and situations. So join us for that show. Thanks for being here today. And remember, look for your opportunities and say yes when you get a yes.